Hey guys, this week on Awesome Cast, we got some newspaper people in uh, Bobby Cherry and Uncle Crappy Mike Pound to talk about the fallout of uh, all the good and the bad going with everything that went on last week with the Boston bombings, the media failing, social media's uh, 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 ups and downs, and everything else. We hashed it all out, and we still have a little bit of fun along the way. This week's Awesome Cast. Hey guys, welcome to the Awesome Cast. It's episode 146, coming to, at you from the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. I'm Mike Sorg, here to get geeky with you. We're going to have some fun, talk about a couple serious topics, but we'll have a little bit of everything going on this week, as per usual. Uh, getting geeky about uh, technology, social media, the internet, whatever, uh, uh, you know, whatever we feel like talking about this week. Back with me once again is Chachi, the defender of Austin, host of Unsung. Writer of Internet Things. Hey, guys. Hey, how you doing? And, I'm doing well. And he takes his Twitter seriously. I do take my Twitter serious. That's good to know. That's good as to know. As, as should you all. Yes. Also, returning, that newspaper guy, digital editor for the Beaver County Times, Mike Pound, at Uncle Crappy on Twitter. How you doing this week? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? Excellent. Excellent, sir. Feeling and, kind of beat up from, from last week. Oh, yeah, I think, but I think we're going to get to that. We will get that. We'll go. And apparently, you were you were partying, partying down on the south side as well. Uh, that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> the people you run into out there. <laughs> and also, first time around the show, we got we're doubling up the newspaper guys this week, guys. It's Bobby Cherry at Go Bobo, or Go Bobo. I don't know how you, how do you, how do you go about that. Yeah, it's actually it's Go Bobo. Go Bobo. Uh, yeah. Unless you're Chris Dilla. Unless you're Chris Dillon, you always say go Bobo. That's always that's always what it is in my head though. Whenever I see it, it's like oh let's go go Bobo go go Bobo. So everybody says you know it, it just like like you you want it to be like I don't know you it know, makes it more fun that way right? I, I I have the hair of a clown, but I'm not actually a clown. <laughs> uh, he's a reporter over at the Swickley Herald. Not the Swickley Herald Times. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to get some of you guys are the Times, the Trib, the Reviews, the whatevers. I, I can't keep it all together. <laughs> so how are you doing tonight, sir? Doing well. Excellent. Excellent. And of course, like I said, we're over at AwesomeCast.com, although I figured there's a little problem with that I need to fix. So we can't actually get to there. So just go to SorgatronMedia.com and look up AwesomeCast and all the shows are there and all the links are over there to the right tucked away. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll, fix, we'll fix that here shortly. Uh, you can also drop us a line at contact at AwesomeCast.com and you can drop us a line on Twitter at AwesomeCast. Uh, we're also on Facebook. We're on uh, Google Plus and we keep an eye on there uh for you guys to you know comment we, we like to tweet out stories during the week uh stuff that we're concerning about talking about on the show and uh you know just see if there's any commentary see what you guys want to uh us to talk about and actually one of the things that one of the reasons we have uh, these two guys here was because of a suggestion i saw on twitter yesterday so i said okay people want us to talk about let's let's go ahead and touch base with that but first let's have a little fun first let's talk about our awesome thing of the week who wants to go first Joshy, you got one. I do have one. What I have you, both. What do you have going on? Well, T-Mobile announced yesterday, uh, probably about noonish, that they were going to release Jelly Bean for my phone, which I've been waiting for since I bought my phone. And what phone is that? Uh, it's the LG Optimus L9, or the Optimus Prime, as I call it. Uh, and it was fin it, they finally released it. But, and this is where it turns into my angry thing of the week, I can't have it yet. What, what's keeping you from having it? Okay, so apparently on my phone, there's or from my phone, there's three different baseband uh, softwares for it. Okay. Uh, they released the update uh, now to fix an issue with the lower version of the baseband software, mm -hmm. um, which I don't have. However, um, I could still get it if. T-Mobile didn't have a download limit for the people who don't need it per day. So I'm waiting in line. Wait, so you're not getting it because they have a cap on how many people they can send it to? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and this was after doing some research. However, in their defense, 
I still stand by the fact that T-Mobile has the greatest uh, customer support service in, in any uh, any industry. It now was- that I think about it, mm-hmm. um, because I, well, I mean, I use I use my Twitter account and complain and be ridiculous as everyone else does because you take it seriously, right? Um, the, the ridiculousness is the seriousness. When are you going to learn this? <laughs> Uh, listen, I get more attention on my Twitter account by being ridiculous than most people get for being serious. Okay. All right. That's, that seems that's totally a, true. That seems about right. Um, but that's not the point. Uh, anyhow, so I, I sent a message out that said, damn it, T-Mobile, when am I going to get my Jelly Bean update? You renounced it. I can't have it. And within a matter of seconds... The T-Mobile account responded to me, uh, offering me tech support because they thought I was having a technical issue and not their uh, limit. And I mean seconds. I I, I sent it out, and then within thirty seconds, I had a response. Mm-hmm. So yes, I, I stand by that fact that they have the greatest tech support uh, in any industry. Awesome. Awesome. So that's my awesome slash angry thing of the week. So how long has it been? How long has Jelly been being uh, Jelly Bean been out uh, that that you've been waiting for it? Uh, I've had this phone since January. January and Jelly Bean's been out how long? Uh, last year sometime. Last year sometime. Yeah, I don't, that's I don't weird. Know for exact, but yeah, I, it, it's because of all the different. It, and this is the down thing, of, downside of uh, Android. Uh, there's so many people that make it with so many different softwares mm-hmm. that it takes a while for each each software or each uh, hardware manufacturer to modify the software or to get them software modified to work for their device. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, and, and I know certain people on the show this evening will talk down to Android on every occasion that they get, um, but Android is still better. What are you talking about? Uh, Bobby. Oh, okay. I was, was saying I didn't think I talked about that bad. <laughs> no, not you. Wow. Uh, I'm Bobby, like I thought I was pretty Bobby, forgiving Bobby of Android. Will diss, will diss Windows, Android, everything in a heartbeat when it's compared to uh, Apple. That's not totally true, but <laughs> oh come on! You said last <laughs> night that uh, you will never go back to Windows. That's accurate. Apple will never go back to superior. Windows operating system. <laughs> Man, I couldn't do this stuff if I didn't have uh, Windows XP. And I appreciate people that like it, but it's not my world. <laughs> I didn't say it was a like. I think it, it was a necessity. Uh, but other than that, um, definitely. Um, well, uh, my my pick of the week is something I actually talked about a few weeks ago. Where am I, How do I lose an iPad? Um, it's actually the... Uh, that's the wrong computer. Uh, the Marvel Unlimited app. Uh, I, I talked about this a few weeks ago, like I said. And I actually, uh, late last week, jumped into it. And um, on my slow, slow iPad 1 to get even more use out of this thing. And there it is. There's an issue of Deadpool from 1993. Uh, good to go. Uh, it's... I just opted for the nine ninety nine a month model because I, d- I didn't know I didn't want to commit to a full year right off the bat to see how it is, um, but it obviously doesn't have everything I was going through like some of the old because I, I bought a few years ago like the old uh, uh, here's like the first like six hundred issues of Uncanny X Men uh, DVDs that they had that were legit and they were PDFs and they're kind of nice. Uh, but the scans were a little ick, so I went back to where I left off reading that and, and to see if they have it. They don't have a lot of those old ones. I was actually reading uh, the new Unlimited uh, Spider-Man, where, where Spider-Man died and it was replaced. Uh, and it was oddly, like, they had ep- uh, issues 1 through 14, and it was missing, like, issue 12. You know, like, little oddities like that. I don't care that, like, the new stuff is, like, six months behind as far as stuff goes i like it's really cool because um they actually uh start separating things out by you can go by characters you can go by series or you can go by comic event so say if i hadn't read like uh civil war or uh or uh world war hulk or something like that i could actually go back and look it up 
and and go through all those issues. Uh, it has the Avengers versus X Men, which I, it looks like it has pretty much the complete Avengers versus X Men. It looks like it's in reading order, a, you know, order of release, and it actually has everything that tied into it. It doesn't just have like uh, Avengers versus X Men. Whether we got one through uh, six, seven, where however far this goes, it also has like the spinoff, like uh, the X Men issues that that crossed over with it, and everything else. Um, it's definitely not as slick as if you were buying the comics from the, uh, Comixology apps or those, like, specific Marvel DC apps or anything like that. Uh, they are using a bit of an HTML5 kind of, that they were, they were using a little bit in a preview in the browser. Uh, so they could use, work on these devices, I guess, a few months leading up to this. So it's still a little janky. It still needs a little bit of work to it. If you look at, you know, again, I'm in the App Store, <laughs> all the reviews, I looked at the first one here, and it actually says, uh, clearly this app was created for by people who hate comics. <laughs> um, right. So, but either way, it still works better than the PDFs I was bringing over uh, you know, via Comic Zeal and, and reading on here. Uh, they're better quality uh, for $10 a month or $5 a month if you actually buy for the entire year. Um, I think it's a really good, a really good, you know, you know, thing for it. it, it it's uh, it's kind of like that mentality with Netflix. You don't have the brand new and you don't have everything. But for somebody like me who just likes to plow through comic books, like I, I, I grabbed all, you know, I've been getting trade paperbacks out of the library for months now. Um, you know, I just love reading. I don't care about collecting or anything like that. I don't have to have the paper in hand. This is why I have something like an iPad. This is perfect for me. Anybody that's into comics and been kind of skirting around the issue of like the digital comics or something like that, or, or don't really want to pay, you know, you know, what, what they have in comicsology. I think it's a really good option. Um, it, it really does feel like, like a Netflix for comic <sighs> books. And, I, and I'm hoping guys like DC and, and other guys start having kind of plans like this for people that want to just check out all those back catalogs and just become, you know, bigger fans of some of those guys and check out, you know, a new series that maybe I wouldn't have bothered before, right? Like, yeah, they just popped up an A-Babies versus X-Babies spinoff. And I'm like, you know, I would never, ever would have thought of buying that, but I'd probably take a look at it just because, right? So, um, but I, I think it's kind of like a little bit of that evolution of, uh, of, of the printed digital. And uh, it's really cool that you have a, a, a nice all-you-can-eat kind of package from Marvel there. So, I know, Chachi, you, you don't like reading comic books in general. No, they're too short. They're too short? Um, now it, first off, let me just state that I don't have a problem with reading comic books. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I, if I'm going to sit down and read a comic book, or any book for that matter, I need a long story. Yeah. Um, and, and that's why I can't, I can't, I cannot think of paying four four bucks for like 20 pages of these things you right know? and that's my problem with con collecting them I, yeah i'm not gonna pay that much money for a 20 page book or keeping that up I'm on getting two percent of the story in. exactly exactly and depending how they so, are like i remember buying spawn books and i'm like i, I got through them and i was like that was it but you got was that bobby they cost four oh. bucks now yeah the general comic book set cost four dollars Wow, is that is. crazy? <laughs> I mean, now they're kind of doing things like where you buy that book and they'll give you the digital version of it. But still, that's that's and, and I've 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 been to some of the panels about the digital comics. Said no, we're not bringing that price down. Mm -hmm. You know that there, there will not be a time where we bring that price down. If they're like older comics on the digital side, yeah, they're coming down. They're having ninety nine cent Mondays, stuff like that. But mm -hmm. other than that, you know, it's kind but of I mean, uh, there's. There's some comic books like uh, uh, Pride of Baghdad, mm -hmm. which is it, it's uh, it, it's about I don't know, it's not exactly a good example of what I mean by a long story, but it, it's like 45 pages. Mm -hmm. um, but the story is uh, really really gripping. Mm -hmm. um, the Pride of da Baghdad. Is a is a, a graphic novel. It's not even a comic book. It's, it's a graphic novel um, that encompasses uh, what the animals in a war zone are going through. Mm -hmm. um, in this one, it just happens to be a pride of lions. Uh, but it, it's uh, the art is fantastic, and it's more gripping than um, 
a 20 page issue of X-Men. Yeah. Um, yeah. so, I mean, it, there is, there's like, there's the exceptions to every rule. Um, but, uh, the difference is this is twice the length. Um, it's a complete story mm-hmm. and it's more in depth and overall better mm-hmm. than going out and spending four bucks for, uh, 2% of a story. Um, that you would have to go out the next week and buy another percent for four bucks. Yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of my problem with like comics in general. Again, you're dropping four bucks per comic for almost nothing to get resolved, even yeah. as far as those. It's just like a section of a story, or it's an arc of about four issues. And even then, like I read, the, I read like the story arc of Wonder Woman from the New Fifty Two recently, and it got to the end. And it was like, well, what was the resolution? You fought right. a dude, and then he just kind of walked away. What what are we doing here? You know, where's I, I, my payoff? Exactly, exactly. But but I still like that there's those trade paperbacks, and I can't I can't read a book, you know, issue to issue. You know, it, it's it's like that. You know, as bad as it is to watch, like now I'm caught up. I have to watch Game of Thrones week to week. Jeez. Um, uh, no, I just wait. <laughs> I know I want to now. I just plow through like the first two seasons and the first like three episodes. It's like now it's like. <sighs> Okay. Okay. Um, it's honestly, uh, and I hate to admit this because it means you were right ultimately. Uh, but at this point, the only reason I still have cables for sports. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I would drop it and watch sports online like everyone else. Uh, but there's other people I live with that, uh, do enjoy watching the, the weekly shows, uh, on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, if, if it were just me, at this point, I probably would just drop it. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, with Netflix, I flew through, and uh, this is going to hurt my man mutation, um, but I, threw, I flew through three seasons of Sister Wives in like Sister three Wives? days. Yeah. What's Don't that? ask. What is that? You've Hold never on. heard of Sister Wives? I'm, I'm surprised that Bobby has never heard of Sister Wives. Um, it was this reality show on TLC about a uh, polygamy family. Wow. Um, and I, I don't... I, on Netflix, and I, I've told Sorg this many a times, on Netflix, I don't care what the show is. Uh, chances are I'll watch at least an episode of it. Sister Wives. Wow. Yeah. But that, yeah, that that that, Nef- that Netflix vacation, I think, is is I think it's going to do nothing but help like comic books too, and right. get more people into it. And it's like you never have checked this out. Now you know all about the Sister Wives. Right. And, and now and, I can go read I don't know uh, the Dazzler miniseries or something like that. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it all kind of comes together. So. But I mean, uh, I, I I fall behind on TV shows very easily mm-hmm. um, because of sports, and I uh, I caught up on Bones in probably two weeks, mm-hmm. and that was the show that really did it for me. Um, as far as waiting until the season was just released on a, a means of online watching, yeah, um, because I mean that was six seasons. I flew through it in probably a week and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I mean, it, because of that, I will, uh, it, I'll watch TV on Netflix, um, and that's that's my main source. What about you guys? Are you? Uh, are you I, I take it by by what you were saying there about the comic book prices. You're not much for comic book readers here. It's been a while for me, uh, obviously. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> just spending forty cents and fifty cents for books when I was a kid, uh, which was a long time ago. That's mm-hmm. it's just a little startling. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they were like a dollar fifty, bumped to dollar ninety nine, three mm-hmm. bucks when they had like the glossy cover because right. that was huge in the nineties. Right. Right. You yeah. know, what about 90s. you? What about you, Bobby? I, I was gonna say I I, I don't re- I never really collected them, um, but I do remember the glossy covers, and that's when I would buy them and maybe be, be interested in them. But I, I four dollars is is quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially you've got a collection of because nobody gets just one book, and it's impossible right. with these crossovers. So that's why that's why I like like trying something like this, you know, that that maybe we'll just collect things because I'm I, I'm patient, you know, much with the you know like like Chachi though, waiting for series to be all together. I'm just gonna wait out till Walking Dead three season three is up on Netflix, go through the whole thing, 
you know. Yeah, once once Walking Dead is on Netflix, yeah, like a, a decent amount of it, yeah. Because I watched the first season as it aired, mm-hmm. and then that was another one of those shows that I just missed because of other things that were on on Sundays. Mm-hmm. And so, at once it there has to be, and it's my new rule. But there has to be at least three seasons of something on Twitter or mm-hmm. on Netflix um, before I, I sit down and watch it. Yep. All right. What about you guys? Uh, what are your awesome things of the week? Uh, crappy? Um, I, I briefly, I have a not so awesome thing in the week. You might have seen me complaining about this on, on Twitter. Um, I, I love Tweetbot. It's been, it's been uh, my iOS uh, Twitter app for, for quite a while. Um, but recently, it's started posting pictures upside down. Oh. <laughs> oh, my I, God. I, I don't know why that is. Um, and, and while their, their, uh, their customer service isn't quite as sharp as T-Mobile's, I did hear back from them after uh, griping about this. So it's, it's something that they're aware of. I have to give them points for that. My um, awesome thing of the week probably should be um, Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week. I'm wearing a shirt from the uh, uh, Release the Firkins Real Ale Festival on Saturday. They, they, they put on a, a great week of stuff. Um, and and they, they do social media very well, I, although they, they had, I think they uh, worked right up to the start of this week to make sure that the, uh, the calendar on the website was functioning. I know they struggle with that, but they've got that taken care of. Um, that would be my awesome thing of the week, except uh, when I, I look, um, when we, we started up today and, and I, I see Bobby, uh, my awesome thing of the week has got to be Bobby Cherry's hair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how could it not be? <laughs> you know, like, uh, I would just like to point out that Pittsburgh Craft um, Beer Week, and Sorg and I discussed this. Yeah, um, is nine days. Yes. Okay. It's a hell so, of a week. That's a yeah. hell of a week. <laughs> Too much to fit in in seven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yes, uh, even even the Chachi Twenty is celebrating Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week. So. I noticed that. I noticed that, and I'm I I, I tried playing this morning. <laughs> I'm going to get one of those bottles. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it you know it, it, the chances. It seems like the chances are better this week for people to win it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't understand why, but both days this week, the first roll mm-hmm. was a winner. Wow, nice! So okay. straight off the bat, I rolled the die once, cool. and someone I had guessed that number. So, nice. so can okay. you can you explain what that is? I don't think I wake up early enough. Well, um, the Chachi really Twenty what, what uh, <laughs> basically. <laughs> It started as me just rolling a twenty-sided die to uh, get uh, fate's determination on how my day was going to be. Okay. Um, one being the lowest, obvious, and twenty being the best. And I was posting it on Twitter, and then I started uh, getting people to guess uh, what the rule was going to be for the day. And then it evolved even further when, uh, I, <laughs> jokingly, uh, Panster had said he wanted to, er, I should get sponsors for it, and I, I jokingly said that it was sponsored by Panster. <laughs> and it, it went on for like a week and a half. And the it started on a Wednesday. And uh, that week, we didn't do anything for it. And then uh, starting Monday, he would he would send me a, a tweet, and the first day was like a dollar twenty six or something like that. Uh, the correct guesser would get a dollar twenty six. If no one win, it, would, it just carried over. And so I'm like, you know what, let's see if we can uh, keep getting sponsors. And that happened by accident as well, because on Friday of that first week of sponsorship, uh, Panster gave away a mystery box. It had a monocle and a Pence t-shirt in it. <laughs> and the gentleman that won the, uh, the mystery box sent me a DM. He said, hey, is there any way I can sponsor uh, a Chachi 20 week uh, <clears throat> just to uh, pay back my good fortune? And uh, we had uh, had Sorg in the Wrestling Mayhem show one week, and then uh, that gentleman who had a lot of awesome stuff to give away. Um, he also did a mystery box, and it was a pop art uh, Daryl Dixon doll from The Walking Dead. Nice. Um, and then, uh, he, and since it's been going on for three weeks now, or it had been going on for three weeks, uh, halfway through that that week, I, I sent out a tweet asking people if they want to sponsor the Chachi 20. And I get absolutely nothing from this. I, I want to point that out, and I should put it on Twitter as well. Um, I don't charge anyone to be a sponsor. All I ask is that they have five days worth of prizes 
and I tell them the general guidelines. Okay. Um, and this week, uh, Sarah, mm-hmm. Miss Bossy No Pants, um, has five beers that she's given away each day um, in honor of uh, Pittsburgh Craft Beer Week. So, I mean, it, it started as me rolling a 20-sided die, and it's evolved into <laughs> rolling a 20-sided and die to determine which one of my followers gets a nifty little prize. And a month <laughs> later, it's serving alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> so and so at go. what time in the morning do you do this? I, I really don't think I'm up early enough. I, I, I uh, send out the first tweet at around 7.30-ish. Okay. Um, the actual die roll isn't until 9.30. Mm. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, and it, it us- I usually send out different variations of uh, the same tweet uh, probably at least five times between 7.30 and 9.30. Okay. So. I'll have to look for it. Yeah, it's um if you even if you don't see it, if it's between seven thirty and nine thirty, just send me a number one through twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, that I mean that's as simple as it gets. Yep. Good. Awesome, Bobby. You have a uh, awesome thing of the week. Yeah, I do, Sorg. It's uh, I, I found an app this morning called Tempo Smart Calendar. It, oh, it's relatively new. Yes. Um. It's it. One of the reviews it calls it Siri's contextual sister. It's from the creators. Uh, it's from the birthplace of Siri. The people who created Siri um, created this app, and it, it seems to be something that can help people who who are in a ton of meetings and, and have things all over the place. And it sort of brings together addresses, contact books. Um, it can send an email to the entire group that you've got. Um, you know, saying, hey, you know, we're running late or, or whatnot. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I have been stuck on a screen that says my calendar is unavailable. So right now, this is what mine looks like. It's just a blank, um, hmm. just blank. But based on the photos and the reviews, it sounds pretty cool. It sounds pretty cool. I And, and when I signed up to it, they still had a waiting list. I mean, it would say, you are such and such in line, like whenever right. you load the app, which was kind of an interesting concept in itself. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Like, I haven't figured out how to implement this in my flow. Uh, you know I what struggled I mean? to implement any app. Uh, what was the app last month? Uh, Mail, I think it was called. The Mailbox that, that everybody, one? Yeah. The Dropbox one? Uh, well, yeah, I think so, that everyone raced to download. I'm not really one of those guys that, that races to download the apps, but this one seemed interesting enough that I that I would download it. Mm-hmm. Um, although, like I said, it's, I don't know how promising it is, so maybe it's not exactly <gasps> the awesome thing of the week, but it has potential to be the awesome thing of the week. Oh, man. I just, wait, wait. I think I just, like, I think I just, like, it, it, it cracked the nut in my head uh, a little bit. Uh, because I have, like, I pulled up uh, Awesome Cast Live, which is going on now. It actually has notes from, I don't know where the notes came from. It has emails connected to it. I don't know how these emails connected to this. Uh, but, but they're wrong because they don't actually apply to the show. But they're, because, like, here's, like, I see a cook, I see something for, for a project I'm doing Thursday, uh, my Monday client, and I don't even know who these people are. Uh, <laughs> though this is the DVD orders. Uh, so I don't think it's completely worked out for me so far. Uh, let's see what what happens when I hit like one for unsung. Eh, no emails. Was well, loading emails. Okay, okay. This is starting to come together in my head. So you load up an event. I guess what it comes your emails for anything talking about any details of that event, right? Right. And right. then it just packages all together. Here, everything is right here in front mm-hmm. of you because that happens to me all the time. I'm gonna go do a shoot. And then I'm like, okay, where were all those emails I was sent two weeks ago with information about where I need to be and what the heck we're going to shoot? And in um, theory, it should put all that together. And, and I noticed here that it says it also connects to Foursquare and Yelp. So I guess if you've got you know an event or a party or something oh. going on, you can instantly see the reviews for the place and, and maybe choose a different place to go or whatnot. This does exactly what I needed to do. I just loaded up the shoot that actually got postponed from yesterday. And here is all the emails for tomorrow's shoot, including the one that says it's canceled. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. The coolest, maybe, maybe the coolest thing for me is, is that you can browse the LinkedIn profiles of those that are attending, that have, that have confirmed uh, events you have. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, but it, it seems like a, a neat little thing to maybe neb on the people you're, uh, you're going to meet with. 
Yeah, it makes sense. If you, especially, and I'm sure, like you guys, you probably meet with a lot of people that are more, uh, you know, more different people, right? Like, yeah. like, like you meet new people all the time, or, right. or or people in the community, or doing, you know, doing things that that's part of your thing about your reporting. Right. Um, and, and even me, when I'm going to do stories for Unsung, like these are these are usually brand new people I haven't met before. Uh, so that would kind of make sense for me to kind of follow up and say, oh, I saw you did da da da, you know. So it makes you a better meeting person, right? In, in theory, it could. <laughs> I like that, that everything you say about this is in theory. <laughs> because again, I, mean, I can't really give a, a, a full review of it because I'm stuck on this, you know, unavailable page. But the photos of it seem to be really cool. So, so I'll give it a chance. We'll see what it, what it turns out to look like. This also makes me want to be a little more concise about what I how I put things in my calendar. Yes. Right. Because uh, because I have this thing uh, for for a Saturday that's just a bunch of question marks and that doesn't really go to anything. Especially uh, if you invite people to that question mark, they're going to see that too. So now, yeah, and, and okay, uh, okay, you just you just sold me on trying this app because I kind of like ah uh, loaded and I, I and I it was going to take like two days to load or whatever <laughs> to sync all my emails, my calendars, and everything. And I'm like, yo, I'm just walking away from this and didn't even think about it. But that's tremendous. I I, I think this might be something. If, if you want to check it out, it's tempo uh, dot ai is the website. Uh, tempo on the apple app store uh it is only apple for now it seems for now it is for yeah now. so I mean, of course this is yeah yeah will come android as, as this thing gets bigger if it if it gets any steam right uh so go check that out if you're a, a meeting type person so thank you um all right let's get into it this is actually um like i said this is actually something that uh funky dung out there on the twitters uh uh, uh threw at me yesterday i was like yeah yeah you, the, i think I think I was already talking to Bobby Cherry here about coming on the show. I'm like, let's get our newspaper guys together. Uh, you're in the media, of course. Last last uh, uh, week, uh, you know, the really you know horrible situation, the bombing in Boston, and as seems to happen whenever there is a big story, especially one of this magnitude, uh, you know, guys like us that are really into like how is social media being used and who screwed up this time seems to be the the, the common story, right? Uh, so I, I thought it'd be good to see, okay, you know, there were some screw ups definitely last year or last week. There was definitely some interesting new things that happened out of last week, uh, using some, uh, some, some new social media that now I didn't think that I hear CNN talking about 4chan and Reddit, for instance. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> so I, you guys, of course, you guys probably had a busy week because everything going on there. Uh, can you, can you, uh, give us a uh, probably a better description than I can give on what exactly happened with things like Reddit and 4chan or anything else that kind of, uh, 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 uh you know, popped up that you were kind of surprised, uh, in, in, in social media or how media, uh, uh, kind of pushed things online. I, I, I guess there, I'd there let were... Mike start because I saw him tweeting Thursday or so about, how to update the, his web page. I, I think that was Wednesday. That, that, and that was the day that was a nightmare. Um, <clears throat> because there were a, a lot of stuff, there was a lot of stuff in, in mainstream media, um, including some sources that I, I generally find to be reliable, um, that uh, suspect or suspects had been, had been captured. Mm -hmm. um, and this was, of course, well before the the, 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 the law enforcement released any images of the of the two guys that were eventually uh, one killed and one captured. Um, and that, that it was a difficult day because it was just it was so hard to keep up with what is true and um, what what social media did in in a in there were a couple things going on here. Um, the immediate thing that day uh, was it accelerated misinformation. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the misinformation was coming from, uh, as, as we found out, uh, from a number of sources, uh, that the stuff that happened on Reddit, um, you know, resulted in, in apologies and retractions and, and scoldings for, uh, for, uh, uh, some of Reddit, Reddit's users. Um, but it also accelerated misinformation that was being reported by mainstream media sources. Um, and, and I got, I got burned by that. Um, like, and I, I certainly wasn't the only one, but. Uh, you know, there were reports from the, the cable news networks that, that someone had been apprehended. And I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. And finally, AP, uh, the Associated Press, moves something that says, yes, um, we have a source that confirms that, that, uh, that someone has been, uh, has been arrested. Um, 
And then as soon as I posted it on the website, uh, I started seeing things on Twitter about uh, from official sources in Boston that said, uh, no, no, that's not the case. And then I'm stuck because I have this story on my, on my homepage uh, that says, yes, someone's been captured. I have Twitter saying, no, someone's not been captured. And then I have to wait for AP to say, to send something else uh, that say that that initial report was, um, is being disputed. Um, that, that took them a while to get to that. And then finally, there were full stories about, um, no, that's not the case. Um, so on, on that, that was, that day was the most frustrating for, for me personally, um, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sort of in the middle of, of trying to keep my site updated, uh, trying to do that as quickly as possible. And boy, when you find out that, that what you've posted is incorrect, um, <laughs> it, it, it's immensely frustrating. Um, and, and the, the, the speed of that, the pace of that, uh, was, is accelerated, uh, by, by the, the, the tools that we all have access to. Mm-hmm. Um, Bobby, I don't know how much you got to watch. I, I think that was Wednesday. Um, and, and I don't know, you know, what, what, uh, what, what you saw, uh, as the, as the afternoon went on, but, uh, I, I would be curious to hear what, what someone else uh, what, what someone else thought as this stuff was was moving and then changing so rapidly. I mean, I guess from my perspective, I I sort of just you know was out of the actual coverage of it, so we, so I just kind of sat back and watched it from the role of a reporter, but also the role of just a just a viewer seeing how this is playing out. And it was interesting to see you know some media outlets take different information, um, and and as that transpired they all kind of were in this chaotic, we don't know what to believe um, or what is fact really. And uh, of course we, you know, we can tie in the, uh, you know, Reddit with the, uh, with the Brown, the missing Brown student who, as we have now found out, Reddit has apologized for. Um, But even there were sources, uh, mainstream media sources, you know, quoting that as a legit, Item saying that this this Brown student was one of the two one of the alleged suspects, so it, it really was a week where it, you, it makes you wonder how news will be covered in the future. Um, there was a story I don't know if I can pull it up here, but there was a story that I read earlier today about um, you know saying mistakes in journalism happened well before um, social media and it. it they were reported well before social media as well. It's just a matter of news being reported as we push that tweet button versus, you know, 12 hours later in print or, or on the nightly news. Mm-hmm. So uh, it, it, this isn't the, this, this might be the, the largest time it's happened with social media, but it's, I don't think it's going to be the last time, but at the same, in the same tone, news is always, you know, changing, you know, and Mike, I'm sure you know this, you know, you could be at the scene of, of an incident and a police officer tells you there's X amount of people involved in the crash. And then later on you find out they've upped that number. So things are always changing. It's just a matter of, of what is the final product of, of what you're going to put in the story. In, in, in situations like that, I mean, for me personally, it's helpful to, to, to kind of start, um, uh, you, you know, take the information you have, and 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 maybe you start with a, a painting with a pretty broad brush. Brush you you um you know you have the, the the basic information from from whatever your source was, and and you can use that. And then, as you find out more, and as as time goes on, you can kind of uh, narrow that down and get more specific. Um, I, the, these things, uh, as as far as if we're if we're critiquing mainstream media. Um, this this is this is going to continue, and the mistakes will still be amplified. I don't know if you remember. Um, it was a, not quite a year ago when when the Supreme Court uh, upheld most of the the Obamacare package. Um, right. Mm-hmm. And it, if if you guys remember that, um, all all three cable news networks blew that one completely, um, and, and that had to do with uh, it had to do with the way that the the, the opinion was worded. Um, but it also had to do with them being in a hurry, right? Um, and and these days, when when uh, when a mainstream media makes a mistake like that, um, it, it is going around the world instantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's you know some people are going to be some people are going to retweet it, uh, quote it, 
uh, and then obviously there's there's sort of an angry kind of backlash when uh, when when you find out uh, whether it's a few minutes later or an hour later that wait, okay no that's that's not actually correct mm. um, that puts more of an onus on. Professionally, it puts more of an onus on us to 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 make sure um, to to be careful with uh, our, the sources of information. Um, to I, I, the the instinct here is to, is to move as quickly as possible, but I, I think you almost have to to be more deliberate um, when when uh, you're you're looking into stuff. I can't. Um, I can retweet someone uh, who says they saw something happening. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to, to you know, put that on the Times account. I'm not going to write something for, for the paper or the website um, in, until I can, I can confirm it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, the instinct is, is to, to get it up there as quickly as possible. But because there are so many sources um, and, and because you don't know who these people are, uh, you have to be more deliberate. Mm -hmm. um, that's something, you know, maybe the general public needs to, to, to consider as well, uh, particularly because of what, what happened with Reddit. Um, right. You know, there are dozens or hundreds of people who, who took it upon themselves to, uh, to start trying to figure out um, who this is going to be. And, they, you know, they, they ID'd a, uh, a high school kid and his track coach um, because in one frame, that, uh, that that someone pulled from a from a video or a picture, um, they they weren't they had backpacks on and they weren't looking at the race course. Um, that I, <laughs> it, 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 that that's the kind of stuff, um, you know. I know professionally that's the kind of stuff that's going to get me sued. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 there's nothing that says that that uh, that a redditor can't get sued for for libel as well. Mm -hmm. um, and, and and as you guys mentioned before, it happened with the, the with the Brown student who's been missing. I can't imagine what his family went through. Um, you know, he's got a name that might sort of sound like it's the right ethnicity that that we all thought about when this stuff happened because because we all thought about it. Um, and and suddenly, you know, there, there's this kid and his family has a Facebook page and they're trying to find him, and all these accusations are showing up. Um, because uh, a, a few people thought, well, he kind of he kind of fits uh, what we think might be a profile of, of, of someone who would do this, and and you know he's, we haven't seen him for a while, so that's that's kind of mysterious. Um, consider the sources, folks. Um, that that's that's what I have to do professionally, and as we all consume more media, um, whether I'm, I'm talking about me professionally or me personally. Um, that that's something that that everyone has to be aware of um, because there are there are real consequences uh, for uh, for making mistakes like that. Now, well, now, unfortunately, oh, sorry. Uh, unfortunately, what I think is happening, and this isn't you guys because you guys are are local uh, mainstream media, um, but the national mainstream media is sick of getting beat, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so they'll they'll take what's on social media and Twitter because it's there first mm. and, and they'll take it as truth without verifying it because they have the money that they can go back and be like, Oh, well, I guess we screwed that one up. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but I mean, everyone wants to try to get there first. Uh, Tom from the chat room has, has uh, along those lines, he says, uh, mistakes in journalism happen because it's a race to Trump. The other guys, as usual, especially with, you know, the, the bigger, I mean, actually everybody in, in news is really kind of trying to, get the scoop right i mean is that is that generally how you got or you guys are i can't say how you guys operate or how it's promoted you know, like you guys want to be the one that's, that's there first right sure sure so, sure so you want to be first but you want to be accurate yeah and, and yeah. there's there's a hard balance there uh, of of being first and being right mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. someone on twitter last week had said you know we're not going to remember who uh, was first, but we'll remember who's wrong. Yeah, and and I think CNN is seeing that, and to a lesser extent, um, in the, in the general public, but but more in the in the journalism world, the AP is is really seeing that too. Um, you know, the AP ran with with the same information CNN did, and um, that's not in AP's character to do that. They they triple check and they and make sure that stuff is right, and and they they blew it last week and they're pretty much your de facto source right they're they're the biggest 
news outlet that people subscribe that outlets subscribe to. So when you're, you know, when when they're saying it, mm -hmm. what else can you do? Exactly. Um, he also goes on to say it started with police scanners and uh, now it's graduated to Twitter. Uh, CNN was following anonymous uh, and flat reporting whatever uh, they tweeted. Um, and, and that's something that we've been seeing for a while, like especially guys like CNN saying, hey, this person tweeted this about the, what's, what they're seeing. Here's pictures from this incident, but nothing's being vetted. Um, and I think we're seeing and. You know, I don't know if those sources uh, about their arrest came from Twitter or whatever, or whatever else. Either way, I think it's uh, a little bit of that pressure of the situation, and maybe getting a little bit ahead of themselves for sure. Absolutely, I, 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 I being as aware as I am of, of the process that AP requires before before something is is sent, um, there there is a source somewhere in 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 Boston, someone that a a reporter and an editor. Uh, probably several uh, of each considered to be reliable, and right. and they they went AP went through that vetting process and and they got burned. Yeah, um, and for AP that doesn't happen very often. Um, and, and it took. I, I I'm I'm making those assumptions because it, it took AP a while to to move a story that said someone had been captured. They 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 finally moved the story you know well after the, the cable networks had been reporting it well after it was all over Twitter. Um, you know, so I I have to assume, and and AP is, uh, for my paper, you know, our, our primary source of, of uh, national and international news. Mm -hmm. um, I I have to assume that that they've gone through that process, and and they are are satisfied that that uh, that the story that they're putting out is accurate. Um, well, and, and it turned and, out not to be. And, and piggybacking off of what Mike said, I mean, for the first time ever, you know, the the general news consumer is seeing how news organizations gather news and report it so uh, you know for the for the ap someone had to as mike said you know be the source to tell them this is what we know at this point and before social media you know maybe this this wouldn't have happened had twitter and, and other types of social media outlets been around but you know at this point in time you know we, we see the general news consumer is watching as the story is developed with the reporters themselves, and as Mike said, you know there 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 had to have been a source somewhere. The AP, this you know CNN didn't make up make up this information. Someone told them this, so so you have to wonder what the process was to get them to that point to to actually run run with that story. Mm -hmm. And it's to further point out uh, how much or how well people listen to what AP says. I, let's just look at the the hack account today. Uh, yes, a AP yes. was hacked earlier today and stated that uh, there were multiple explosions at the White House. Oh, well, I mean, because of that one tweet, the, the Dow dropped 150 points, which is which isn't chump change. Yeah. Right, right. I mean, that affected the market today. Mm-hmm. 100 percent. I mean, and that was less than 140 characters from an account. That normally what they say is is fact and happened. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom's in the chat uh, talking about uh, he says dropping suspects with no confirmation would be a recipe for disaster. Stress through the roof and the random finger pointing, um, and that's what mm -hmm. we saw. I, I think and, and going back to your uh, the Reddit and the 4chan situations, and 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 uh, Tom's actually uh, you know liking a lot of this stuff to with the social media to what happened in Egypt, how we mm -hmm. saw. Uh, news outlets got got a inside you know look into the riots, uh, and of course you were seeing the the, the problems with that with this situation. Um, but I, I think we're also seeing with the 4chan and the Reddit's like this whole mob mentality mm -hmm. uh, that can that can be that can happen here. You don't actually have to be a mob present that goes awry because um, everybody at the explosion actually handled themselves pretty well. Uh, but still, everybody in in. You know, after that, and, and I don't know, maybe this stuff is is fueled by guys that were making whatever allegations over on the info wars and the conspiracy theorists right off the oh. bat. Uh, but you know, you get something like a Reddit community, a 4chan community, where those guys have in the past uh, drummed up support for stuff like you know the anti SOPA uh, run last year, CISPA. Uh, you know, other grassroots causes like that, you know, what what can be a really good cause mm -hmm. can definitely go the other way, too. 
you know, I mean, rallying, so you can rally support for the positive and the negative in these cases. That, that's a great point about mob mentality, and that's that's existed for as long as is recorded history. Um, and, and the difference is now uh, how rapidly it can spread. And, and as you said, it doesn't have to be a group of people who are present in one spot. Um, you know, you saw that really clearly last week, and that's that's well, that's what that was. Um, uh, I, I, I don't have any doubt. I mean, if you, if you look at the, 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 the people who were, who were targeted um, by, uh, on Reddit and, and on 4chan, um, you know, they, they fit uh, a, a certain ethnic profile. Um, they had a, a, a certain look about them. And then it's something as random as, you know, they had backpacks on. Um, and suddenly you've got dozens or hundreds or thousands of people going, yeah, that's, that's the guy. That's got to be the guy. Um, it, 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 it's, it's the exact same thing as, uh, as, a, as a mob of people, you know, marching down the street with, mm-hmm. with torches and pitchforks. Everybody, um, and everybody wanted an answer, so they were going to get an answer. Exactly. One way or another. And I think maybe the most unfortunate thing, at least I can take away from this as a journalist, is... You know, as Mike said earlier, if, if Mike or I were to do this, you know, we'd, we'd be out of a job today. Um, but the folks on Reddit and, and, and other types of, of social media outlets, what what kind of, you know, sanctions will happen to them? And chances are none. Mm-hmm. But, but you know, if, if Mike or I were to do this, it would be a, a, a really different situation. Mm-hmm. Um, hey, hey, oh, go ahead. Well, and, and you know, if, if Bobby and I have... Um, reason to, uh, to to hurry too. There are not a ton of instances, but there are some where you know our papers are competing, um, and, and you know it it it, I, it can be easy to get caught up in that, and you have to stop and think. No, I I, I don't know this. I need to Certainly. take a more deliberate mm-hmm. approach here. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, and, and 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 even looking uh, yeah. beyond this, you know, we've we've had everybody stirred up over the week. Uh, you know, it seems like this was really good timing for something like CISPA to come up. Uh, that you know, for those who don't know, it's a it's a it's a it's a collection of rules um, to make a, make it easier for government agencies to get your private information uh, without the uh, uh, you know, organization like say Facebook, Google, whoever. Uh, to be not liable for that information, private information that they give out. Uh, already got pushed through, I believe, the House, if I'm not mistaken, but I think it got through the House before and got put down in the Senate. Uh, the president is still saying that as it is, it will not, uh, it will, will be vetoed. Um, but you're getting stuff like that. You're getting, you know, a, a little outside the tech side, but you're getting stuff like, hey, this is why we needed uh, immigration reform. He's like, these guys were citizens. I, I don't think there's much more you could, I mean, obviously there's always much more you could do. And that's a whole other issue. Um, but now you're getting uh, stuff like CISPA has now got a backup of this incident, whether it's correct or incorrect. Yeah, that's true. And it, and, and troubling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Again, a little bit more of that mob mentality and that, that, that public, mm-hmm. uh, you know. I mean, that's exactly what's happened with the guns, you know. You, you got Newtown, and now we're trying to push through, you know, gun laws. Right or wrong, whatever that you think of them, huh. um, but everything's got to so everything's so reactionary. Unfortunately, uh, Tom brought up an excellent point in the chat room, hmm. and the internet overall is kind of like Wikipedia. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> turns to it for information, but there's no regulation or consequence for submissions. Oh uh, yeah, especially if you go to something like a Reddit or a 4chan, they're they're the most I mean 4chan as a role is anonymous, right? Yes. Uh yes. Reddit, I don't know uh much about the anonymity of Reddit, but I think for the most part it is. You know, it's not like uh, you you don't get this kind of stuff happening on Facebook because you got a name attached to everybody. Mm-hmm. You know. Right. Um I mean there's some groups on there and everything, but you don't hear about this from somebody like that. You know. Um I, did, I, I think that's a recipe for a problem. A, a, anonymity is, you know, important to have, of course. But you know, it, it, this is exactly the, the the plus and the minus side of that. So, yeah. well, uh, well, we touched on it. <laughs> 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 so uh, just a little bit, just a little bit. And there was even like I, I can. There's been some really good conversations. Like everybody's looking back. I randomly when i have nothing else going on a sunday you know when that rally happens i put on meet the press because there's nothing on uh and they actually had a good media conversation about this tom brokaw 
you know, was mm-hmm. on there. And they, they, everybody's having a real kind of analysis of what happened last week. And, and, and it seems like media in general is looking at how can we do better at this. Well, and I think that happens in any situation. But let's not let's not focus just on on what went wrong last week. Um, you know, mm-hmm. you have to give a lot of credit to the television stations and the newspapers up in Boston who um, were around the clock covering this Thursday into Friday during the manhunt um, for for the two suspects. Um, I mean, I was up all night long. I didn't sleep at all Thursday into Friday watching. Um, two or three different channels from time to time and, and watching how they covered it and then watching the Boston Globe's coverage of it too. So, I mean, there was a lot of good that came out of last week too where I was sort of, you know, I felt really good about journalism during those moments watching um, the TV stations go from, you know, hospital to a different point where, uh, you know, things might be happening. Um, one of the channels, you know, was, was nonstop at um, the suspect's house, you know, watching, you know, things happen. And they also had a reporter who was in Watertown locked down with residents during a shootout. Um, and you could hear things happen over the phone. So, I mean, a lot of a lot of good did come out of last week, too. And, and it sort of made me feel good about um, about what we do as reporters. Um, so so there are definitely, you know, both sides to, to that story um, from last week. Awesome. Uh, sword, I, I want to give a shout out to Dunkin' sword. Donuts. <laughs> Armor Garbage Bird. Just a, a quick thing, sort have me on uh, one year from now. Uh, I hear it, it actually kind of lost in all the stuff yet last year or last week was um, uh, the uh, the annual Pulitzers. Um, uh, your yeah. award winners are named. Have me on a year from now. I guarantee you that the Global Win Pulitzers for that's, their coverage. Uh, that's exactly. Of, of, yes, certainly. Guarantee it. In fact, yeah, Monday I Sunday night I signed up for a Boston Globe account on their paywall site mm. um, exclusively for coverage because I want to see how they continue covering this because um, it's it's been stellar by far. Mm-hmm. So the, the, so did this put Boston news on the map more than usual? Like that? Like is this is this a boon for them then? No, I think the Boston Globe was already a pretty well known of course publication. Yeah, and news group. So. I mean, it just reaffirmed what uh, most of the nation already knew. Okay. Okay. It's it's one of those stories where no matter no matter where you're at, you know, reporters are, are going to to cover this. We're so used to covering the, the typical news, but you know, I, I saw somewhere today someone said this is that once in, in a thirty year career, you know, story, and I think when push comes to shove, reporters really can can do their best, and I think. Last week showed it, um, especially Thursday and Friday, when, when it became more of a, a community service to let people know, you know, hey, if you live in these certain towns, stay, 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 you know, stay locked down. Um, it, it was truly the information source that it's supposed to be that we sometimes forget that it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Well, I, I, I can't see us going into, uh, you know, cord cutting and Twitter stories after this. Uh, I, I think it was really good for us to kind of get out because there was a lot that really does affect like the social media stuff, you know, that, that we all follow uh, mm-hmm. on this panel. And, and, you know, Chachi, he's the most serious Twitterer here, right? Absolutely. <laughs> What's that? You're the most serious Twitter here out of all of us. Yeah, I am. So Did I you, mean, actually, something? I said, that's why every tweet I sent out last week was about Boston and absolutely nothing else. Sure. And, and that's funny because I didn't send out a single tweet about Boston. <laughs> I, honestly, I, I did not. I stayed away from it. I didn't want to talk about it. I <laughs> And as bad as I, I don't feel about this, um, and my first thought Tuesday morning when I woke up was, well, let's do the Chachi 20. Yep. And, and I think that's important, too. I think it's important. Like I know there was talk. Uh, because uh, oh, well, actually, Raw, I believe, was like Monday Night Raw was was in Boston, or the next town, like that, like that night or something. I don't know. That, I don't, they weren't in Boston, but they were just in Boston. They were there. Actually, you know, somebody said, well, maybe they shouldn't have had it, you know, because it was a live event. and There was just the bombing, you know, possibly a terrorist a- attack. But you know, somebody like saying, no, we have to do business as usual. You know, mm-hmm. uh, Chachi's going to do his Chachi twenty. We're, you know, I, I kind of decisively, you know, don't say much about it and go to, I know certain podcasts are going to cover it like we did now, you know, 
Uh, but I, when we did, went to podcasting uh, last week, I did not want to touch on it. You know, business as usual. This happened. You have your sources. Go to uh, these fine two gentlemen here to get your sources. You know, a lot better than we're going to do. You know, and uh, and we're going to do our thing. Uh, I think that's really important situ situations like that for sure that we don't all get caught up in it. So yep. people have a relief because it got tough getting to going to lunch, you know, later in the week and there's CNN's on every TV and you can't get, you really can't get away with, uh, uh, from it, you know? Yep. Yep. So, yep. Well, uh, with that, uh, Uncle Crappy, Mike Pound, where are you, where can the people find your digital, uh, 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 bits and pieces? Online. Uh, Twitter is uh, at Uncle Crappy. I still occasionally write on a blog at UncleCrappy.com, <laughs> and you can find professional me, including a, a, a decent news break about the uh, the hacking of the AP Twitter account today at TimesOnline.com. Excellent. And Bobby Cherry, where are you? Um, I can be found um, at GoBobo, G-O-B-O-B-B-O. -B -B -O. How do you um, pronounce that again? G-O-B-O-B-B-O. And also, sometimes, occasionally blogging at bobbycherry.com. There's about 20 draft posts in there. So maybe someday I'll, I'll hit I know how publish. that goes. <laughs> yep. And Chachi, all of your fine digital writings. All, all right, Chachi the says. Internet. I'm everywhere. At Chachi says, it's her coin to begin.com. Unsung. Yep. You want Sun going up this week? I, I, I'm everywhere. Yes, he is. Uh, nonprofit video game, ridiculousness. I cover it all, except yeah. for actual news. <laughs> Good. At least that we can depend on, right? I, I leave that to these fine gentlemen here. <laughs> we are professionals. Do not try this at home. <laughs> and I'm talking about nothing important over at Sorgatron.com, and we're doing videos about nothing important except for that nonprofit news show uh, song over at SorgatronMedia.com. Uh, and I'm also at Sorgatron on the Twitters, of course. And according to my title, I still hate New Jersey. And that was <laughs> accurate. Uh, thanks a lot to Alex Cars, Tom Bobbitt, Bobby F. J. Town in the chat talking with us, giving us some great stuff to talk about, having a great discussion amongst themselves, actually, about the, apparently the Second Amendment from what I'm peeking in here. Oh, uh, so thank you to our awesome chat room. Check us out. Uh, awesome cast online at uh, just go to sorgatronmedia.com for the time being contact at awesomecast.com uh, at awesomecast on the twitters I know it was, it, the, the, the twitter was glitching all my shots earlier so I had to turn it off on the screen sorry about that guys on the video uh, we'll see how that turns out um, other than that please check us out uh, on Facebook on Twitter like I said on the Google Plus talk with us about these stories what do you think about the stuff we talked about here on this show uh, tag it hashtag AC146 we already got one quote out there and maybe I'll uh, pump a few more uh, throughout the week here uh, so let us know what you think about everything that happened last week and, and our thoughts of it and uh, follow these guys of course on Twitter and uh, give them a piece of your mind uh, with that, thank you. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. Hey, are you enjoying this show here on the Sorgatron Media Network, uh, straight from Pittsburgh, PA? Did you know there's a bunch of other videos coming from Pittsburgh, and there's one source where you can find everything Pittsburgh-based, so you can represent the Steel City and see people who do represent the Steel City. Go to our friends over at PittsburghOnVideo.org, a big aggregator of these, this great stuff coming from the Steel City on video to you, wherever you are around the world. That's PittsburghOnVideo.org. Go check it out.